I'm going to do one more parabola problem, but before I get to that, I'd like to talk about the uh, reflective property of parabolas. And uh, so, here's how it works. If you take a parabola, and if you rotate it, you form a dish. The, the dish is a, called a paraboloid. Now, you know, technically the parabola just keeps on going, but if you just <laughs> uh, rotate in this part of a parabola, you'll, you'll form a, a dish. And uh, kind of like a satellite dish antenna. And in a, I'm sure you've probably seen these antennas before. Uh, the antennas always have some kind of um, electronic stuff here. Okay, I call it a signal collector. I'm not sure what the if there's a technical name for that. But this is where the electronics are. Now, what's what's the purpose of this? Well, um, we use satellite dish antennas to pull in radio or TV signals from that are bounced off a satellite in outer space. And so it turns out uh, about 22,300 miles up is, well it's not that big, but anyway there's a, there's a satellite dish up there, uh, I'm sorry, satellite uh, communication satellite, uh, 22,300 miles. So if this is the Earth, Earth and if you orbited at an altitude of 22,300 miles, I think that's the number, it's pretty close to that, then it turns out the, the time for one orbit is 24 hours. And of course, the Earth spins in 24 hours. So what they do is they, they placed, oh, they, <laughs> the famous they have placed communication satellites above the equator of the Earth they ring the equator, and um, and because they're moving at the same uh, rotational speed as we are moving, once every 24 hours, then by our perspective, those, those satellites look like they have they're not moving at all, because we're really moving at the same angular with the same angular velocity. How's that? Okay, so um, they're they're kind of fixed up there. So and I've had one of these. I bought one of these in. Uh, 1997 when I moved to this house and, uh, and, and went on the deck and attached it to the deck and, and I followed the instructions on how to figure out where the satellite dish was up there and uh, I mean the communication satellite had my TV hooked up to it and I finally brought it in I got the signal really really nicely and so uh, now what's going on up there so um, you know the communications people like Time Warner or whoever whoever does this stuff is bouncing signals off these communication satellites. Now the signals that, that stream in that stream in uh, parallel to the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is kind of like perpendicular through the uh, parabola there. Uh, those signals when they hit the dish bounce off to the focus point. So the reflective property of a parabola is that all the um, information as far as radio signals, it could be light, it could be sound, all reflect off the dish into the focus. And that's why there's that uh, signal collector there. It's collecting all that energy and then it gets, uh, you know, ampli it gets uh, uh, amplified and sent off to your TV or, or whatever. So uh, very, very effective. Now, um, the uh, Next time you watch a, a football game on TV, <laughs> okay. uh, like a pro football game. Now, I've been to a couple pro games. It's been many, many years. Uh, I think I was doomed to watch the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks in the 1970s lose their first, you know, some of their first 20-some uh, games. Um, anyway, the, uh, we're in the stadium. There's a lot of crowd noise. You don't hear what's going on down in the field, I don't think, as a rule. You, don't, you still don't hear what's going on down there. But when you're watching TV, you usually can. Often you can hear the quarterback calling the signals and when he hikes the ball, the center hikes the ball, they, these guys clash and you hear the, the grunting and the clash of pads and all the grisly stuff of uh, football combat. And uh, how come we can hear that? It's because there's a guy down on the sidelines with a satellite, with a, uh, I'm sorry, with a parabolic reflector microphone. So there's a guy running around down there along the sidelines. You, you can usually see it sometimes. See that person down there. He's carrying a dish maybe this big, I recall, and it's got a microphone in there. <laughs> and so he's pointing that parabolic reflector at the line of scrimmage. 
and those sound waves that they're making, when they strike the, uh, the reflector, they all bounce into the microphone. So it's kind of like having an ear this big that's focused, a focused ear that's this big. And of course it can be amplified through electronics and, and so forth. So that's how can you hear what's going on down there. So anyway, the, um, these, are, these can be used for, I think people have constructed like ovens and things like that, uh, outdoor <laughs> parabolic ovens or something that uh, you, know, you can cook with. Anyway, it's uh, interesting reflective properties in parabolas. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, well, let's, uh, let me do one little quick problem with parabolas, and we'll move on to ellipses. Here I've described uh, the two key properties of a parabola. Uh, and uh, here it is. What is the equation of the parabola with focus at negative 4, comma 3, and directrix at uh, a directrix of y equals to 8? Okay, fair question. What is that? All right, now, um, I, what do I need to know? You got to pause the video and see if you can figure this out. It's a great problem. Did you figure it out? Let's see what happens. Now, I have a focus. I'm just going to kind of sketch this. So, here's my directrix. Y equal to 8. And the focus is at negative 4, 3. So, it's down here somewhere. Negative 4, 3. Alright, so what direction does this parabola go? Now that's focus, that's not the vertex. And so the vertex is midway here. So the shape of the parabola is upside down. So that way it means this one is going to have the form y equals minus x squared. Now that's not the equation of this parabola. But the format is, is in that form. Okay, now the um, I think I may just... Uh, a little mess here, <laughs> okay, because the, the vertex, I think, is going to be at a fraction. Um, this total distance is 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 is 5. So it means the focal length is going to be uh, half of that, 5 halves. So, P equals to 5 halves. We got that figured out. Great. Now we have to figure out the, the vertex. Well, the, the x value is of the vertex. Oops, I'm a little bit off center again. Sorry about that. The x value of the vertex is negative 4. So the vertex is going to be is negative 4, comma. Now what's the y value? Uh, I can either subtract 5 halves from 8 or I can add 5 halves to 3. Either way, you get uh, 5 and a half or uh, 11 halves. So 3 plus 5 halves is 6 halves plus 5 halves is 11 halves. 11 halves. All right. Vertex is negative 4, comma, 11 halves. So let's put it together. Uh, y minus 11 halves, okay, there's the y coordinate of the vertex, equals to negative, parentheses, x plus 4 squared. So here's the the uh, x value of the, court of the uh, vertex is negative 4, divided by, and uh, my 4 times my focal length, 4 times 5 halves, is, is simply 4 times 2 and a half is equal to 10. So my denominator is 10. There we go. So let me block it off here. That is the equation of our parabola, using the, the format with the, with the focus in it. So... There we go. Okay, so I think ellipses are more, um, a lot more interesting, and, and hyperbolas are pretty interesting. So uh, let's move on to the ellipse.